Welcome back to High Gain Guitar Academy. My name is Neil, and today we are gonna be talking about improvising in real time. What does that mean? Well, improvising, basically, we're just gonna be making things up and in real time, meaning it's just gonna be as it's happening. We wanna be able to make up guitar parts and make it sound natural and have it flow as if we've been playing it for 20 years, but we literally just came up with it, okay? That's what we're gonna work on. Uh, I know there's a lot of different techniques, but I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I use. Now, the first thing is kind of identifying what it is that we're trying to improvise. If we're talking about one specific overall genre, let's do rock and metal. Let's try to be well-rounded within the blanket of the rock and metal genre, because if you guys are into that as well, you know there's a lot of subcategories, a lot of trickle down that once we use these basic techniques, they will apply to most of these subcategories, right? So let's kind of start there. Let's talk about rock and metal improvisation. So at this point, it's likely that we know where our notes are on the neck. And while we're talking about a creative thing, like just coming up with things on the fly, we still have to kind of have some idea of where we're starting from. So if a song is in the key of E minor, you may have several shapes and licks and things that you like to use in that key. Maybe there are things you've learned from other artists. Maybe there are things you've come up with on your own, but those are gonna be your tools that you're going to use to build this, uh, this improvised piece of music, okay? So let's say we're talking about improvising a guitar solo. Let's say you're, you're jamming with a friend, maybe you're on stage with a band, maybe you're just at home playing along with a song that you like and you just wanna add a little extra you to it, okay? And you wanna just improvise some things. Think about all the tools in our toolbox, those tools being licks you know, techniques you know, uh, you know, different shapes you know around the neck. We want to be able to access those at any time, okay? So if I just said, hey, give me a lick in E minor, okay? I could just throw that out there without even thinking about it. I literally did not think about that, just muscle memory from playing so much guitar and kind of knowing where my keys are, I could just whip it out. Hey, give me another E minor lick. Okay, that's another E minor lick. That was kind of like a little more bluesy. Uh, give me, give me like a, a thrashier E minor lick. Okay, so I, I could just access all these techniques from my toolbox because I've practiced these different things on their own. Okay, so now that I've got all these things on my own, we're going to apply them on the spot. Your nerves are sometimes gonna get the best of you in doing this. We're gonna hit some funny notes, you know, because we're on the spot having to do things under pressure. But the more you do this, the better you will get at it. And letting yourself flow is kind of the key here. When you're at home in a controlled environment, uh, it's a lot easier. You know, you're comfortable, you're in your own environment, you have air conditioning maybe, you're sitting down on a chair, you know, you have a sandwich, whatever it is that makes you comfortable so you can flow, you can let the things that you've practiced on for so long naturally flow. So let's say you're, uh, you're playing something in the key of uh, A. Let's just say A major, for example, right? Let's say that's kind of my rhythm, and I just wanna be able to make up some solo things, improvise some things, come up with some ideas, and not think too much about it. I'm going to reference different a shapes that I know. Um, just basic scales I know. You know, all the different areas that I know how to play things in the key of A. Now that being said, you gotta know that stuff. I think it's important to know the areas of the neck that you can play these different licks. Because uh, if you stick in one spot of the neck, that improvisation is gonna get really boring. If everything I do is in one spot, you're gonna repeat too much, okay? A little repetition's good, but you don't wanna do it too much. So learn three or four spots that you can play on the neck and have multiple like different licks ready to kind of throw in there at random, okay? I think that's your first thing. If you can come up with a couple areas on the neck that you can play in any given key and have 
two or three or four licks that you that you are pretty proficient at that you can play in each of those areas. Okay, I think that's a good starting point. So let's just make something up in the key of A. I'm just gonna improvise just to show you how I might do that. So there you go, I just made that up on the fly. I'm familiar with where I can play in the key of A, so I was able to kind of traverse the entire neck. Now one of the easiest ways to improvise and use more of the neck than just one area is just to use your octave. And what I mean by that is, let's say I'm playing in uh, the key of G. Let's say I just do a pentatonic scale, right, in the key of G here. Do it down here and then do it up here, same thing, right? So if I'm doing At least now, even though I'm playing the same thing, at least now I've got a high and a low version, okay? Now, that's, you know, you don't wanna just run through the scale, that's gonna be really boring. So I think the next thing that we really need to focus on is phrasing. So phrasing is gonna be really important. The, the main thing you wanna think about with phrasing is how you would speak. And I've used this reference before, but a lot of the time when you're improvising in particular and coming up with things on the fly, act as though you are speaking a language that you're already very familiar with. Like you're carrying on a conversation with someone in the moment. You don't have to sit and think before you speak. You can just speak. So we have to get good at dancing around the shapes we're familiar with, okay? So phrasing is where that comes into play. So let's say we know that G pentatonic. <laughs> And I should be able to pick out random notes from that scale and put them in any order and make up little phrases, as it were, uh, without having to think too hard about it, right? So let's say, let's say that's my rhythm. Now I'm gonna dance around that sheet. Okay, so at the end there, you see how I sort of repeated a section. That's gonna be important in phrasing, you know, especially when you're improvising. It's okay to repeat sections. In fact, it's better sometimes because that really drives it home with people to where they say, oh, he's, he's kind of in this groove now. If it's a constant string of notes, it can be lost on most listeners, especially non-musician listeners, right? So it's okay to create a little phrase and repeat it a couple times and then maybe add a little something different as you go. So check this out. Now that was kind of like a classic blues rocky sort of thing, uh, you know, if that's not your thing, fine. But you get the point, you get that example of how I repeated some things and added little bits of different stuff as I went. That was all made up on the fly using a pentatonic scale that I'm super used to playing. I didn't have to think a whole lot about how to play that scale. I was able to just speak through it. Okay, now let's try like a slightly different thing. Let's do something a little bit more metal, I guess, uh, to show that you don't always have to just play classic blues rock to improvise things, right? So let's do something a little bit more metal. Let's say we're in the key of E and I wanna make up a lead that sort of goes over like a, you know, something at that tempo. I'm able to do that just because I kind of know the scale that I wanted to start from. I'm just gonna, you know, I have some interesting shapes that I've learned over the years, and I can access those from my toolbox quickly, depending on the, the, the feel that I'm going for, right? Whatever the song is, whatever the jam is, whatever you're trying to just make up on the spot, I can just dance around those, uh, those shapes that I'm used to playing, okay? So that's really number one, is have some shapes that you're used to playing, know a couple spots on the neck that you can access those, and uh, don't forget to use phrasing you know, repeating things is okay. It doesn't have to be a constant string of new, new, new. Just find a way to speak through your instrument. Now think about guitarists like David Gilmour. Now I know that's kind of a classic rock reference, but David Gilmour is often referred to as the master of the space in between notes. 
And I think that's really uh, to the point of what I was saying is you don't always have to be talking and talking and talking and talking. Okay, sometimes you can take a little space in between these phrases. So let's say I wanted to play something a little bit more emotional and slower and heartfelt, and I wanted to give these phrases a little more space in between to really say something meaningful with my guitar. Again, I'm just making this up based off of things I'm familiar with playing. I, I just know the shapes, I can walk around them, no problem, I can just speak the language. So that's kind of my take on improvising. Apply that to whatever style of music you're into. Get some ideas from some of the bands and artists that you're, that you're familiar with that you enjoy. Uh, but then start getting creative, making it up on your own. Start at home, start with jamming along with the, you know, any songs you wanna turn on and just have fun with it, you know? Get familiar with your guitar. You gotta be a, a piece of each other. You have to kind of connect with your instrument to where you can just flow through it. So start at home, get comfortable, then when you start doing it in front of people, you won't have to think about it as much. The muscle memory will kick in. I promise it will. And yes, you will always be nervous when performing in front of people because you care about it, okay? As long as you care about what you're doing, it will be a thing. But the more you practice this, that muscle memory and that those habits in your heart will take over and get you through whatever you're having to make up on the fly, okay? And sometimes those are the best performances. I'm telling you, when you can just come up with something on the spot and fully communicate what you're feeling in your heart and what you're hearing in your head, uh, that's, that's when the real magic happens. And I've seen it happen enough times in live concerts and things to where it's, it's, it's just true, guys. So uh, work on your improvisation. Hopefully this was helpful to you. We'll see you next time.